Hi, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. I'm Nathaniel and I've been invited down for a couple of days from the Warrington store uh, to turn a coronation piece. This is what I've made and it's a segmented union jack. So I'm going to take you through the steps I use to create this piece. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the bit of wood that I've got down on the bandsaw into strips uh, so that I can relaminate them together to start creating the, the union jack shape. Between each of the cuts I'm making on the bandsaw, I'm taking the piece of wood over to the surface planer just to get a flat surface to reference off the fence. The reason I'm using the bandsaw here rather than the table saw is just because the blade curve is thinner I won't waste as much material. Uh, so now I've cut the walnut on the bandsaw, uh, I'm going to go to, I'm over at the table saw to cut the maple uh, down to the thickness I need for the outline of the, the cross in the middle, the X in the middle, and the bits coming off the centre as well. For the maple I need strips that are 1, 2 and 3 centimetres wide. For the paduke I need a strip that's 6 centimetres wide and another that's 2 centimetres wide. So when I was over at the table saw, uh, I cut these a little bit oversized so that I can take them over to the planer and just get them down to their final thickness. So what I'm going to do next is run them all through uh, just to get them down to exactly the right thickness. When I cut the pieces, I cut them a little bit oversized just so I've got enough material to go down to the correct thickness. I'm using calipers here just to ensure I've got the correct thickness exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the long boards that I've got down to length uh, so when I stack them up I'm not wasting a load of material. Uh, I'm also going to put, cut these on an angle once again so I'm, I'm not wasting a load of material by chopping off the corners. So I've got all the segments cut, uh, the next step is to glue them all together. Uh, once I've glued all these bits together, then I can start working on the, the X in the middle. It's crucial at this stage that every single piece has a really good coverage of glue on it, just because you don't want anything flying apart later on in the process when you start to turn. This is quite a tricky glue up due to all the different angles that are on the surfaces so all I'm doing is trying to get as many clamps on there as possible and I'm also using sideways clamps for alignment to stop everything sliding around. So the glue's dry enough now to move on to the next stage, which is cutting out the uh, the pattern in the block that I've glued up. So the stripe should be going at a 30.9 degree angle. So what I'm doing is I've, I've measured a line from that angle uh, so I can cut, cut it square and then make the square from that reference face. Thank you. 
before I move on to the next stage I need to get rid of the bandsaw marks from the bit of wood so I'm doing that by using a plane and that's going to get me a really flat surface to glue to. Just finished trimming up and planing the outside sections so the next step is to glue these white strips onto the sections that I've already done uh, and then once those are dry I can square them off and start gluing the main assembly together. I'm using the shooting board here and that'll ensure I get a perfect 90 degree angle on the corner so when I glue everything up it's going to go together perfectly. So I've just planed all the edges to square uh, and then what I'm going to do now is laminate everything together so I've got the final form which I can then cut into a circle and stick on the lathe to turn into a platter. It's very beneficial to do a dry glue up before you actually put the glue on the piece just because you'll see where there's any gaps and you'll be able to remove anything before you actually put the glue on because if you start gluing everything up and then realise you've got a massive gap down one of the seams it's really really bad so by making sure you've got glue all the way over and that you do a, a test fit first you'll avoid that and uh, hopefully you won't have any problems. When I put the parallel clamps on, it just pulled out of square very slightly, so all I'm doing here is I'm using a sash clamp just to pull it back, just to make sure everything's lined up properly. I'm putting as many clamps as I can fit on here, because I want to make sure all the joints are as tight as I can get them. Thank you. 
You want to leave the glue at least 24 hours to dry before you move on to the next step, which is cutting the blank round on the bandsaw. So I've got the blank mounted on the lathe here, it's too big to go over the bed so I've got the extension bed mounted and that gives me enough room to get the tool rest all the way around. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just cleaning up the outside edge, then go into the centre and then create a recess so I can flip it around to turn the other side. I'm starting out with a push cut and that's going to get me as good a surface finish as I can get. What you've got to be mindful of with a piece like this is that you've got multiple species of wood and the grain's running in all different directions and that can be something that can cause quite a lot of tear out if you don't use the correct technique. Now the outside is trued up, it's a little bit more balanced on the lathe and I can turn the speed up very slightly. I'm now moving to the face and I'm going to clean that off and that's going to make it even more balanced. So what I'm doing now is I'm just measuring for the recess that I'm going to create and what I'm going to do is just cut in here in the centre so that I can pop the chuck in and expand the jaws outwards to hold the whole thing on the opposite way. 
So what I can do is just hold the, the marking gauge up, or what I can do is I can hold the calipers up to the piece and just mark out with light pressure, just with one point in the centre and the other point on the wood, I can just mark out exactly where I need to cut. The jaws that I'm using are the Type G jaws and they require a 112mm recess in the base to get the best possible grip. I remove the bulk of the material with the bowl gouge and then I put the skew chisel which I'm just using to create the little dovetail that I need on the inside. So now I've got that recess in the bottom of the bowl, uh, or well, what will be the top. Um, I can take it off the faceplate, flip it over and remount it so I can turn the, the underside. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to just make sure the chuck fits. So the bowl's mounted backwards now with the, with the chuck and the mortise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten this off first and I can turn the speed up a little bit because it'll be a little bit more balanced and then I can start shaping the bottom of the bowl before we then flip it round again to turn the inside. I started by doing a push cut here but about halfway through I decided to switch to a scraping cut just because of the quicker stock removal. This is going to be the underside of the platter so I can start to bring those pull cuts round and start getting that shape that I'm after.
I'm once again creating that 112mm recess in the base so I can flip it around to turn the inside. Because of how deep this recess is, the screw holes from the faceplate are now completely gone. I've now got the ski chisel and I'm just using that to create that dovetail again. So I've finished all the turning, there's a couple of uh, slight imperfections in the surface but I'll get those out with sandpaper. I'm going to work through the grits from 80, then I'm going to go to 120 and then up to 240 and then I can start applying my finish. I think dust extraction is one of the most important things in your workshop. So I've got my respirator on and I've also got a dust extractor hooked up to take as much of that dust away as possible. You want everything to be sanded, even the recess here, because that's going to be part of the finished piece once it's all oiled.
I've gone with the food safe finish here and what it's going to do is it's going to bring out all the colours of the wood that look really really nice and it's also going to mean that the piece is functional so I can put fruit or whatever inside the platter. So now the bottom's finished, I've flipped it over and now I can start working on the inside. I don't want to go too deep here, I uh, just want to keep it nice and shallow because I still want to be able to see that uh, Union Jack pattern really clearly. For sanding you want to make sure the speed is nice and low, probably about three quarters or even half of what it was while you were turning and that helps alleviate excess heat build up and it can mean the dust can clear quicker and you'll have a much easier time. So guys, that's how I made this piece. I hope you enjoyed watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and join us next time for another Woodworking Wisdom.